Hello, this is Mark of Mark's Corinthian Rethinks. Um, someone requested that I make a video that's a step-by-step -step guide of how to paint a figure. So I have done that. Um, I made another introduction to go with it that sort of explained all the brushes that I use and the paints and things like that. But the video is already over 20 minutes even without that. So I thought I'll do that again another day and make it into another video. And I just make this shorter introduction to explain why I'm just diving straight in with painting a figure on the on the next one, on the next part of the video. So um, here it comes, how to paint a figure step-by-step -step guide. Please forgive my production values, it's my first attempt. Um, yeah, enjoy, hopefully it'll be helpful to someone. Okay, so ready to get started now. Um, I've changed my webcam so you can see my beautiful face while I, while I work. Um, I'm going to get started on this Paolo Di Canio figure, which someone sent me and asked if I would paint it into Celtic kit. Um, so obviously that's going to be predominantly white. Um, often I find that even if kits aren't white, sometimes it's better to do a white kit first because if you're using, for example, yellow or light blue, or sometimes even your colours like green and red, the original kit will show through them and you might end up doing two, three, four coats to sort of make sure it's covered. Um, white seems to cover a bit better, so I might end up doing two white coats on this one. But, um, yeah, sort of like an, you can use white for sort of an undercoat. Um, another bit of advice, um, think through, so you obviously you've got to think about what colours you're going to be doing. Um, think what figures are going to need to be white if you're doing white first, because then you can do all the white in one go. And like I said before, um, it's better to try and sort of cut down the cut down the waiting, the wasted time in between. Sometimes if you're doing, say, six or seven figures that all need a bit of white on them, by the time you've done the all of them, the first one that you started on might be dry, so you can start on the next layer. So um, I've got all my figures here. Quite a few of them are going to need some white on them. So, um, yeah, I'm going to get started. Um, this is something that I got wrong when I first started painting. I've got my knife to get the lid off. Um, when I was dead keen and excited to get started when I was doing it for the first time, I just opened my white paint, went straight in and started painting. Um, with all your paints, you're going to need to stir them first. So like I said, I keep the, um, the cotton buds, cut the ends off and they like make a good little stirrer. Um, so make sure you stir it up first, give it a good stir. And when you've stir stirred it for a little bit, you can wipe the excess paint off your cotton bud, put it down somewhere safe where it's not going to stain anything. Uh, put the lid back on and give it a good shake. I don't want me shaking that for too long, but um, you know, just shake it for I don't know. I think it says on the tin like sort of 30 seconds or something like that. Um, then use your knife to open it again, and then you can get started on your painting. Um, I've got several different brushes that I use when I'm doing the sort of first coat, the main colour covering everything. I tend to use a, a zero brush. That's this one here. They've got the brushes all have numbers on them. Um, the smaller the number, the thinner the brush. So I've got a, a four zero brush here. You can see compared to the zero brush, it's much thinner. It's quite hard to see really, but never mind. Uh, so <laughs> the more zero is the thinner the brush. Um, for your standard Corinthian figures, I don't tend to go bigger than a zero. I might sometimes use a two, um, but obviously you've got less accuracy and um, you might go sort of where you want to, onto the skin and things when you get into around the arms, around the collar and that kind of thing. So um, yeah, I'm starting with my zero brush and um, just dip it in and get going. Trying to paint it too thickly. I mean, this, I don't know if this is going to be beneficial particularly to watch. Um, just sort of work around it. When you get to the edges, obviously you've got to be a bit more careful. But like I said, if you make a mistake, I like to keep a cotton bud, well a clean one, That's I've used that end already, and um, you can just dip it into your white spirit and you can sort of clean off anything you've made. But also, of course, a lot of people don't seem to get this when, I'm, when I've told them about it before. If you do make a mistake, leave it to dry and paint over it is another thing you can do. So sometimes I just use those, uh, those cotton buds because I'm impatient and I want to get it right the first time. But if you're worried about doing that, it's quite easy to just uh, leave it to dry and paint over it a second time after. Um, something else I've just thought of as I've been doing it, um, we might, it might not occur to some people, might do, I don't know if I'm just stating the obvious here, but obviously turn your figure however is comfortable while you're painting. So while I'm 
while I'm doing the neck, uh, like around the collar, I'm holding it sort of that way up. Might be easy when you're doing certain parts to turn it upside down. Obviously, you can do that as you want to. Um, I don't even know how much of this is on the video because when I start painting, I always sort of hold it low down and lean my hands on the desk um, to keep it nice and steady and still. So actually, yeah, you're just watching the top of my head. I wonder if I tip the camera on my laptop down slightly. It'll be a bit better. Yeah, and just continue with the first layer of white. Okay, so that's the shirt mainly done. I mean, I can tell you now it's definitely going to need another layer because some of the sort of the, the light maroon, uh, the claret rather, from the West Ham shirt is still showing through. Um, you'll see I've got, I've not done the socks yet and there's some bits around the bottom of the shorts that I haven't done. Um, for that I'm going to swap to a thinner brush. But I'll just sort of show you, this is, I've got my, um, my white spirit in its little lid here and actually that's, I just find that so much easier and more convenient than keeping having to go to sinks or whatever. And give your brush a swirl around in there, press it against the sides and um, yeah that's that's clean. I tend to sort of just check it on my finger, see if any white's still coming off. If it's not, give a little twirl to sort of drain the white spirit off a little bit. And yeah, that's that brush clean and ready. I mean, you'll see it is a little bit frayed, this one. Um, as you use them, they do obviously just get into worse conditions. So every now and then, you just have to buy new brushes. Um, go down to my four zeros brush just to do the socks and some smaller areas. And then I'll be back with you for the next section a bit later on. Um, you might have noticed there that after I'd used the thinner brush on the sort of on the socks and the underside of the shorts, that's probably the trickiest trickiest area, just on the, the bottom surfaces of the shorts. I went back and used my detail brush to go on the bits around the top of the collar. Um, I do that sometimes. I leave a little bit while I'm using the thicker brush, just because I know I'll be able to do it more neatly with this one. So yeah, go through and go back and go to some areas that it was a bit harder to do. Um, you might notice that a bit more on shirts that aren't mainly white to begin with if you're doing a white layer on the top of them. Um, I think that'll do for now. Hopefully as I was painting you just sort of watched again, making sure you're comfortable with how you're holding it. Change it, turn it around in your fingers, don't paint awkwardly and cack handed. Just make sure, you know, just hold it how it's comfortable and make sure you've got a good view of the surface that you're painting. I'm going to leave that to dry now. Um, I'm going to carry on with some other figures but I'm not going to record that. I'm just going to concentrate on this video, on this one figure, because otherwise I think it's going to get a bit convoluted. It probably is already. But um, yeah, I'll, I'll pause for now and I'll be back with you shortly. Good afternoon. It's a few days later. Um, I didn't have time to do any more painting soon after I did it. Um, I did a second white layer on Decanio. So now the white is to a standard that I'm happy with. You can't see the, the claret showing through it anymore. So now I'm going to do some of the detail work, which um, by that I mean the actual painted bits. When it comes to badges and shirt numbers and sponsors, I use decals for those. Not everyone does, but um, I do. I think, to be honest, I think no matter how good you are at painting, it's never going to be quite as neat as it is printed. I know some people prefer to have a repaint entirely painted, but um, I use decals for that. So I'm going to be doing the, um, the hoops and sort of around the collar and those kind of details. For the Celtic shirt, um, I realised as I looked over the footage from last time that you couldn't really see very well what I was doing, so I'll try and hold it up where it can be seen without that um, impeding my painting too much. And I'm just going to go um, straight in for it really, so I've just got my brush and I find with these thin brushes, now this one is quite, a, well I've had it for a few months now, so to get a fine point on it I just dip it in the white spirit before I start, give it a squeeze and a little twist to get the point as fine as possible at the end so that's just a little little pointer for if your brushes are starting to get a little bit sort of frayed at the ends um, and yeah I'm just going to go straight in I'm going to do a bit of the collar this one of the complications on some of the figures you get sometimes this one doesn't have a collar sort of sculpted onto the shirt so I'm going to have to paint it on um, so I'm going to start with that bit of advice for 
when you dip your brush into your paint, when you're doing this kind of fine detail work, only get the very end, the very end of your brush in the paint. Don't dip the whole thing in because otherwise you're just gonna, it's not possible to get the line as fine. I'm gonna tip the camera down a little bit so hopefully you can see what I'm doing. And yeah, just gonna go straight for the um, details. The collar has two thin green stripes. So I'm just going to go straight for them. You'll notice again that I um, turn the figure as I'm working. Just so you can see what you're doing. Um, dipping your brush, as I said, only the very tip into the paint, little and often. And um, yeah, this is one of those kind of bits where if I were to make a mistake, I'd have my, um, my cotton buds on hand. To just do a quick clean up. I mean, sometimes I do that by by going back with my thin brush with the white afterwards to sort of do any corrections that I need to. I'm going to give my brush another twirl because the point needs to be as fine as possible for stuff like this. I don't want to end up with a thick line when I've started with a thin line. Sometimes if I think a bit too much paint has gone on the brush, I do just give it a wipe on the edge of either the, um, the white spirit container that I showed you last time, or the edge of the tin. So I've nearly finished the first of those white stripe, uh, green stripes, rather, which will hopefully help Paolo look a little bit like he's wearing a collar even though the shirt hasn't been sculpted with one. So here's what I've done so far. You can see the green bit just below the um, below the neck, which they have on that, this design, and around the edge of the collar, you've got these two thin green stripes. You can see it's not perfectly straight there. I'll be honest, a few, maybe a year ago, I'd have probably settled for that, but as it is now, I think I'll probably, when it's dry, get some white and just sort of tidy up the back, just sort of on that bit there because I'm more of a perfectionist than I, used to, than I used to be when it comes to this thing, this kind of thing. I think next, while that's drying a little bit so I don't smudge myself, I'm going to do the socks. So again, that's some, time, some way that you can think about the order that you do things so you're not going too close to your old work. And then after that, I'm going to put the hoops on the shirt. Okay, so... Um just been doing the socks there. You can see them a little bit better because the stripes are a bit thicker. Um, I've got one or two areas that I'm going to need to tidy up. Often you'll find when you're doing your socks a bit of the paint goes onto the ball. You might be able to see there. Um, sort of just around about there. Some of the green's gone to the ball. Um, they're not looking too bad actually in terms of areas that I need to straighten up. I've just spotted one now as I look at it closely. Um, the other thing that I will sort of point out to you about the socks the hardest part to do is the um the sort of insides, so sort of in this bit here. All I can the only advice I can really give you there is sort of try and make sure hold it in a way that you can get see as much of it as possible. So sometimes it's that way, sometimes you'll give it a turn around and you'll have to sort of reach inwards and have some paint on the inside of your brush to make sure you're doing that side. Um it's just sort of about feeling comfortable and making sure that you can see as much of the area that you're going to paint as possible. Um, I'm just going to have a quick look at the picture of the kit because obviously I've got my camera on my laptop so it's a bit harder to look on there, look on my phone. Um, and yeah, onto the hoops. Um, with the hoops, this is one of those times where I'm still using my thin detail brush on the first stripe there. And what I'd say while you're doing it is, um, firstly, if you're not sure about the arms, just leave them for the time being. And you can always sort of add the detail to them, add where the hoops go afterwards. Um, and yeah, this is, it's not a sketch, this, this painting. So I try and do sort of long, 
smooth strokes are better than kind of sketchy ones, if that makes sense. I'm just sticking to the front for the time being as well. Um, when I get onto the back, you'll be able to see the joint. Well, with the sort of this middle stripe that I'm working on now, second one, um, where it goes to the side, you'll be able to see where the joint needs to be and hopefully follow it on to keep it nice and straight for around the back. There's not really an exact science to doing this, it's just sort of keep it as straight as you can. Like I said, long smooth strokes do, I would say, give you a better line, but like I said, you can always go and tidy them up with a bit of white afterwards. So I've finished the stripes on the front. You can see there's one or two areas I'm just going to tidy up a little bit with the white afterwards. Um, another problem that sometimes comes up with the figures on this one, the shorts actually aren't parallel to the, how the hoops are going. Um, so I've gone onto the top of the shorts a little bit there, but what I'm starting to film now, and obviously just sort of, you can see where it's a bit bumpy on there, I'm going to tidy it up. Um, use those lines that you've made to, to carry on onto the back. And again, this is not final, it's not my neatest just yet, but I've used, obviously you can see I've used that line, the central hoop, to carry on onto the back, and I'll tidy that up and I'll carry on, you see where the bottom one is and can carry on across there. The only place where you have to guess a little bit is the top, but um, you know that should be fine as well. You can see sort of where the, the gap it'll fit into just there. So here it is with all the green hoops done. You see I've done the, um, done the sleeves as well. Um, I'll come back to it in a little while to tidy up with some white. Um, what I might actually do on this one is put the decals on first because with the um, the sponsor on the front just here it's going to cover up a bit of the, the green so obviously I won't need to tidy that up and with the badge, uh, the, the number 7 rather that's going to be going on the back that's on a sort of a white sticker for this one which I'll explain why when I put it on um, so again some of the central areas I won't need to bother neatening it up because they'll be covered up by the decal but obviously yeah I'll tidy up some of the others I think uh, the the arms are a bit tricky because they're in different positions and actually the the right arm is smaller the right sleeve is smaller than the left but I can see I'm just not quite happy with the, the consistency of the stripes there so that's something I'll look at um, I can't remember if I've already said this large areas of it probably are already dried but I'm going to give it just a little bit longer before I apply the decals and tidy up just to reduce the risk of smudging any paint that is still wet I can just see there as well the um, the green that I mentioned earlier that's gone onto the ball. When I'm doing my white tidying up, I will address that as well. Okay, so here is Paolo. He is dry and ready to have his decals applied. And as I said on that last clip, I'm going to put those on before I tidy up the stripes because there are some areas that won't need to be tidied up. Um, I'm not going to go into how I've actually made these decals now. I think I might do a separate video on that because that's complicated enough in itself. So let's just assume you've got one. Here's the first one. Look, there's his number seven ready to go on. Um, and you will notice, hopefully, you can see that there's white around it. You can get clear decal paper as well. Here's the white one. Um, and you need to make sure that you've cut quite closely around the edge, as you can see I have. Um, now hopefully this goes well because I don't know if they've changed how they make it over the last year or so because some, at some point during that time they've gone from going on like a dream to sometimes just peeling off the back completely and not being, well it's still doable, still able to stick them on but it's a pain in the backside. So um, what you do is you see where the white ends, if I just sort of ease that back there you can then peel off the adhesive, uh, the, the clear film layer leaving the adhesive and it's not come off too badly. Sometimes if the if the front comes off it makes it a real pain. As it is it's stayed on reasonably well. So I'm just going to cut above the top of where the number seven is. Oh and there you go, the front's come off now. So it is um, it's stuck to my scissors. And this is what I was talking about, it's sometimes being a pain in the backside. The clear paper sometimes works better than the white but in some instances, like now, you do need to use the white. So I've got it, normally if the front's on, it's much easier to handle. So I've got it just stuck to the end of my finger. And basically, I'm going to sort of ease the sticky side onto the back of the shirt and um, press it down. 
if this really doesn't show, I'm sorry, but um, obviously it's better to get it right than to try and make a brilliant video where I've ruined your figure. So there we go, that's on and it's central. And as I said, look, it's covered up. Let's lift that back up. You don't need to be zoomed in on my legs. It's, um, well, it's looking backwards because of the camera, but you can see it's covered up some of the stripes. So I'll just sort of neaten those up afterwards. Uh, I'll apply the decals on the front. I'm not going to video all of it because there's not too much point really. Um, so yeah, I'll do the shorts badge. In fact, I'll do one more for you. So again, you can see there's the white section. Ease it back. And then you can peel off the clear film layer. And again, that's not come off too badly. I wonder if this one's going to end up stuck on my scissors as well. This is the badge that I'm using for the shorts. I'm going to do the, um, the sponsor and the shirt badge off camera because that might be a bit trickier because the, the badge is central and it just means everything's got to be squeezed into a bit of a smaller space. So I'm cutting as close as I can to the decal itself. And, oh, hasn't stuck to the scissors, but I think it has come off its front. Yeah, so it's going to be the bit of awkwardness again. Just bear with me a minute. And actually, it's not gone on too badly. So there we see. He's got his Celtic badge on his shorts. He's got his number seven on. I'm going to do the others off camera because I've shown you two now. And um, yeah, like I said, these ones might be a bit more fiddly. Hopefully be done shortly. Okay, we are nearly there now. You can see I've got the decals on. Celtic Badges is sponsor and is number seven. Um, so now I'm just going to tidy up some of the, the edges that aren't quite as neat and straight as I would like them. Um, obviously, that's something for you to just practice as you get better at. Again, maybe a couple of years ago I might have been quite happy with how that is um, as it is now. I just want to tidy up. I need to, I'll have a look at the picture and see if the stripes do go right up to the edge of the, the badge, that top hoop, because you know obviously if I can get my fine brush on that I can do the green up to there. Um, but yeah that's it, I'm not going to film myself tidying up because I think you've seen enough of the top of my head and a figure that you can barely see already. So I'll just take photos of the finished item soon and that will be the end of the clip. And there we have it, finished figure. Um, I've tidied up the stripes a little bit. You'll see around the neck there it's a bit neater than it was on those stripes on the collar and straightened up some of the hoops. Um, added the white boots as I was doing that because obviously I was using a white, white on my brush and just taken any of the green that was on the ball and covered that with some white as well. So yeah, there's, uh, there's my first video. Um, like, comment, I was going to say subscribe, I probably wouldn't bother subscribing really because I don't know how many videos I'm going to make, I've got ideas for maybe three or four others, but you're probably better off um, liking my Facebook page for those kind of, because I'll, I'll probably post videos to there anyway. So um, yeah, links in the description, Mark's Corinthian Repaints on Facebook, and I will see you soon.